So we were adding color holds and we were doing what were called replacement color holds. I put a little bit of green into all of the black line art. And then I did this uh, kind of creation of the light bulb by replacing the, the black lines just around the light bulb and using layer styles to brighten it up. If I want the light bulb to be soft, I can put that on top of my dissolved black line art layer. Okay, so we have lots of color hold options. I'm going to show you one more, which is incredibly straightforward. And what if I want to add a highlight that's just on top of everything? What if I want to make the edge of that light bulb really glowing? Like glinting, like a sword in the sun. I can just make a new layer on top of my black bread. This is like an olive with a toothpick in the top of the sandwich. And I'm just going to draw with my lasso tool a little star shape. This is a classic color hold. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I'm going to say edit fill with white. Oh, got to do that within. Edit fill with white. There it is. Then I'm going to deselect. I can trans, whoops, control T. Not Command T. I can Control T and I can rotate it. Right? I can use my compositing knowledge and distort it, warp it, change it, bop it, flip it. Okay, I can also use Gaussian Blur, which we were just using under Filter. Blur, Gaussian Blur, to soften it out. But you see how it's over the top of the lines. That's why it's a color hold. The more I blur it, the less opaque it will be. Okay, now I can take that same glint, which is subtle, right? I can move it with my move tool and my arrow keys, and get it just exactly where I want it, but then I can duplicate it, Command J, and then move it to other places I want to glint. Transform it, Control T, not Command T. Rotate it, shrink it, do all these different things. And you see how it's just floating above the black. It's called a color hold because the printer has to hold that area from being filled with black ink. I can duplicate it again, Command J. I can put it at the edges of things. Control T, not Command T. I can play with its opacity, but you see it's over the top of the black lines, wherever I'm putting it. making it all look bright and shiny. Seems like I might as well put one in the middle of the star. Control T, not Command T. I can warp it. It has soft edges. I always try to keep my spot illustrations fairly on the bright side color-wise because it saves my clients money on ink. <laughs> the brighter it is, the less ink they have to use. I can even change it to screen mode, make it just as bright as possible. Right? Or I can duplicate it on top of itself and then blur it again the last filter. I'll just get brighter and brighter. Get that eye, that star in the eye, really bright. 
If I wanted to brighten that star in the eye anymore, I would do the color hold thing to it. In fact, I could do that pretty easily. So I could go to my black line art and use my magic wand and select the star. Not that star. Why are you being difficult? Because layer styles can be selected. There we go. And now I'm going to duplicate that, move it up above, and I'm going to copy the layer style from my light bulb, which was this one. Yep. I'm going to right click on it and say copy layer style. Actually, how do they do this? Let's see. Layer style, copy. Hopefully I did it. And then I go back up to Oh my gosh. I'm just doing a, asking a lot of photo P here. I'm going to help it out by combining a lot of those little color hold stars into one layer. Okay, but I'm going to go to my black line art, <laughs> try to show it to you without it glitching. Save my work. Whenever it starts to glitch on you, you can tell. Just save. And I'm going to use my magic wand and select just the line art that I want to replace. Duplicate it. Command J. It's now layer four. Move that up above. And then I'm going to steal from my light bulb here, right click, go to layer style, little drop down arrow, say copy, then move up to layer four, right click, say layer style, paste, and it will paste that layer style onto the eye, just replacing those lines. So those are all these kind of crazy things I can do, along with all these little stars that are everywhere. I might add one to the nose, and then I'll be done. And then maybe one on the teeth. You know, there's lots. Yeah, absolutely. So what we want to do is put our best one up. So this is how we do it. We're going to add what's called a, um, an offset. And this will help with yours too, Olivia. So what we do is we turn on our black background. And you see when I turn on the black background, all the line art dissolves and is lost. So I want that line art to show up. So what I do is I select every layer except the background layers that I've used for coloring with shift. I'm going to merge them one last time. In fact, I'm going to do everything except the color holds. So I'm going to work from my black line art down. So the full sandwich, not the backgrounds. Hold down option, then say layer merge layers. while you're holding down option. It should give you a new full color illustration layer. There it is. And you can now add effects to that. And the effect you want to do is either a stroke that is white on the outside. So you have to change the color to white, just like we've done before with our logos. And you can use any color for it for an offset that you like, but white is traditional. 
and then you decide your size of it. This is to help it show up on things like black backgrounds, dark red t-shirts. I'm going to do a, a 20 pixel size. So that's a stroke. That's a clean offset. The other one you might want to do is a soft offset, which is an outer glow. And again, you can change that to white instead of its default, which is a yellow, or the one I use for my light bulbs anyway. Go to a solid white. Say OK. And what I like about the outer glow is you can actually build noise into it as well, just like with dissolve. And I'm going to make that size a little bit smaller. That's a little bit strong. Think how you would want it to look on a black t-shirt. So you can still see the edges of your, of your line. So that looks good. So then you decide which one do you want. Which effect? And you can turn them on and off. Do I want the stroke? Should show up. Photo piece just lagging. Or do I want the outer glow? Once you've chosen an offset that, that makes it really, really versatile and visible, whether it's a clean stroke, whether it's like this, an outer glow, then you turn off your backgrounds and you're going to save it or export it rather as a PNG. Now this has all of your different coloring. So it has like kind of the, the layer replacement over some of my black lines and it has the stars on top of everything and it's got the full spectrum and it's just got everything. But the background is turned off. It's got the offset around it though you can't really see it on the grid and you're going to save it as a PNG. That is what you will put to your desktop and that is what you will put into Canvas. Make sure you save the file for yourself as your usual PSD, which I'm saving into my Assignment 5 folder. And now is pretty much done. So I can mark it green. And I'm going to mark this PNG purple. So we talked about kind of duotone. This was a duotone test I did, just some simple stuff. And then this was our my finished one, free floating. And it's all the stuff we did is pretty subtle, but it makes it so much more kind of finished off than just doing kind of flat color and satin. So you decide how much or how little coloring you think is needed. And then for our next assignment, we'll be adding text to it. So if I go to where we post our assignments, I can now add that PNG to it. And then I'm going to show you something extra cool in the last minute. So now once you have your sketch posted, your refined line art posted, and your finished PNG with offset colored spot illustration posted, now we're ready if you want to go to the home page, go to links, and you will see under links a link for a site called Redbubble. And Redbubble is one that you just need a, w a website to join, and you can make everything on there private or public. So if you're not sure about the copyright, if you don't think it's ready for sale yet, you don't need to make it public, but you can see how, how it works for yourself. Once you have a profile, you can say add new work, and all you need is a high resolution PNG. So I'm going to take that PNG I just posted to Canvas, I'm going to put it here, I'm going to give it its required title just for the moment, I'm not going to fill anything else in, 